this is Professor Kim Nelson with the Jewelry Design Department of the Fashion Institute of Technology. Uh, doing another tutorial in our series of tutorials for uh, basic CAD modeling in Rhino. I'm going to continue where I left off before, um, covering Booleaning with our uh, band ring project. Okay. Uh, once again, this is my design. I, I want to talk about booleaning um, and finishing up the project, but I also want to discuss um, the concept of continuing to work with your model until you get what you want. Uh, I have some issues with how my model is turning out. Things I would like to change. As I mentioned early on in the semester, the level of modeling we're doing right now in Rhino is what I would call maquette modeling. Um, it's modeling for a three-dimensional sketch. That is different than the kind of modeling you're going to do if you're trying to do a finished surfaced model. Time allowing and energy allowing this evening, I will take this all the way through. So bear with me. All right. So for starters, one of the things I noticed when I finished my ring last week, uh, this section of the tutorial, is that as I wrapped the pattern around, it became elongated and stretched. In class, we discussed why that might have been. Uh, I tried changing the length of the curve, uh, the main flow curve, and everything else. It didn't make any difference. The truth is, when you stretch my pattern, it simply looks like this, uh, which means I either accept it and say, OK, that's what Rhino would like me to do, or I don't and I force Rhino to do what I would like it to do and you know which way I'll be going with that. I always insist on the software giving me what I want. So, what I'm going to need to do is to scale this whole band um, more or less uh, like this. That'll give me a more squared um, center section, which is what I want. Okay? Um, there's no simple way to do this, unfortunately. I wish there were. Um, but there isn't. What I would hope I would be able to do is I would hope that I would be able to simply truncate my pattern, uh, scale it, but I want to keep my wire diameter the same. I like my wire thickness. Um, I would like to do it once and array it around, but I can't because once I change the horizontal scale so it no longer reflects a perfect circle, or square in my case, laid out flat, the rotation won't work. Um, I can't mirror. Um, so I have to go a, a bit lengthy on, on how I'm going to fix it. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my curves, my parent curves here, and I'm going to array them polar around the center point in my design. Turn off grid snap. Never want to leave grid snap running when you're not using it. Number of items four, enter, enter. Okay, now I ended up wrote, um, arraying those side curves, which I did not need to do. Okay, so here's my pattern. Here's my side. I'm going to go ahead, I'll mirror this over. Because in my pattern, that's a mirrored element. I'm going to go ahead and select those. Notice how when I drag the window select, none of the green curves lit up. It's because that layer is locked. Okay? I'm going to non uniform scale this entire element. Alright? And um, it's a little uh, tricky to do. If I were scaling it this way, it would be more of a concern because I would be messing with how my pieces interlock. Scaling it this way, I am going to affect the relationship with the bands, but I don't mind. I don't mind moving the bands in a little bit. So that's what I'll do. Non-uniform scale around the center of the element. 90% in the y-axis, so it's a little bit shorter here. Uh, now I'll show it as I go through it. Uh, x-axis is want to stay the same, so one enter. Y-axis I want to scale 
so I'll type. Actually, I think I wanted a little more than 90, uh, or a little less than 90. I'm going to type in 0.88%. And the z-axis, I don't want any change, so 1 enter. Okay. And you can see that gives me a substantially squat pattern through here. Um, which I believe will look nice revolved. Um, I can confirm that, by the way, by simply uh, grabbing this element um, of curves, grouping them quickly, and flowing them. Flow along curve. And then looking, and do I think that that's nice? Okay. If I do not think that's nice, if I think that is um, too much of a scale, um, which I, I happen to think, um, I can keep them grouped, flow them before I scale them with history. Curve was locked, the layer was locked. Come in and take a look at that. I'm going to kill my grid so I'm not fighting with it. I'm going to turn off my blue layer. Turn off, well, I need my green layer on. Turn off the rims so I can see better. And, and see here, interestingly enough, without the piping, it doesn't look so elongated as it turns out in my finished piece. So that's a concern for me. I, I can't really depend on this. I know when I scaled the whole thing, 90% looked good, so I'll go back and do that. I actually just go ahead and uh, non-uniform scale it. I'll do it flat here. One, um, uh, 90.9 in the Y, and 1 in Z. And it'll update. Yeah, it looks a little squat here, but I believe it'll look nice in the pipes. So I'll delete that. Turn my grid back on and work with this for my piping. I'm going to ungroup so I can use my pipes individually. And I'm going to go ahead and create uh, new piping on my curves. Okay. I have a couple of layers turned off here. I'm going to use them uh, so I can have more layers to work with. That was my original flat pattern which might be easy, interesting to see, so I'm going to hide it instead of deleting it. All right. So off I go. Solid pipe. Diameter is 1.3. I'm going to keep this pattern going around. Oh no, we have a problem. Shoot. Not good. Somehow. When I did this, I did not manage to scale or, or include... One of these curves got lost. I think it's when I deleted the three-dimensional version that had been flowed along curve. I need to make sure that I keep all of them. Just same thing, non-uniform scale. my curves for a 1.2. I'm making my pipes 
so I get good bite in between the, the, the pipes here. And the last one I'll do 1.2, so the outside dimension of my element stays the same. So that one's 1.2. And the way I finished those pipes off was with a sphere in my design, so I'll go ahead and do that now. Solid sphere center radius from end snap, and that's 1.2. And before, when I first made this, and you watched it being done in the other video, I could just make this element once and uh, polar array. I can't do that now because my pattern is slightly narrower than it is, or shorter than it is long, so I've got that. I want just the curves uh, at the end of these to trim these spheres with. First off, I happen to know that um, curves cut better than surfaces, and um, also, I need to get rid of the caps at the end of these pipes anyway. So I'm going to pre-select my four pipes. I'm going to explode it. Exploding breaks a poly surface into its separate surfaces. Exploded four poly surfaces into 12 surfaces. A very efficient thing to do when you're modeling is to try and keep the things that you want uh, for the next command selected. I want to delete four surfaces. Actually, I want to delete eight surfaces. So I want to keep those eight surfaces that I want to delete um, selected. So do that. I've already got them selected because I've exploded everything. I'm going to hold down Control and click on the things I don't want to delete. That leaves the remaining ones still selected, so when I hit the Delete button, they're just gone. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to use a curve. Remember, in my workspace, I take this fly out, curve from object, and I drag it and I put it over there, okay? Um, and since I just did that, I lost it, so put it back, So, because I use them all the time. So duplicate border will give me the curves at the end of each of these pipes, which will cut well. I'm going to come in here. I could turn off my pipes for a minute. Here, select the curve, trim off the back of that sphere, trim off the back of that sphere. I have my 
side curves. Uh, to resurface those sides for my model, um, remember I have a 1.8 wire here. Diameter 1.8. But my wire, I want it 1.8 wide thick uh, width, but I only want it 1.2 thick here. So I want it wider than it is thick. If you'll recall the way I did that, is I took this main wire that it was sitting on, copied it using grid snap, get it out of the way, projected this to the C-plane, which you can pull right here, project to C-plane, delete objects is yes, so I get a nice flat version of that curve. And now I will uh, delete this original one. Come over here and pipe it here instead. So there's my pipe. But I want to make it thinner, so non-uniform scale. From the end of the wire, the end of the curve, turn off grid snap once again. I don't want it to change here, so that's one. I don't want it to change here, so that's one enter. I want it to change here, and I want it to do a, an equation for me. I will divide 1.2, which is how thick I want it to be, by 1.2. thinner version of the pipe. Now I want to flow this over onto the sculptural curve. So I'll pre-select, transform, flow along curve from this curve to that. The last thing I, I like to do with this is I like to fill at the edge of the curve so that it blends nicely into my piece. Try a quarter millimeter, see if that works. 0.25. Works fine. Bring back my wires, see that it looks nice. It does. I mean, this isn't perfect. This isn't the greatest connection ever. But I'll live with it. Maybe I'll try filleting it a little bit more, see if I get what I want. Try 0.3. doesn't make a huge difference. Okay, that's something I'm going to want to think about as I continue to surface my model, whether or not I would like to make that fit better. Well, why not, why not consider it now? The side that's too short, basically I would like this to extend in, is the top side. So I'll delete this. Turn off the layers I'm not using. Delete that. Turn on both of these curves. Now these curves have the same math because I just projected one flat. I'm going to grab the end five points of this curve. The end five points of this curve. M enter, hold down the shift key, and drag them out long enough that I get a overlap. This curve is no longer representational of that one. I didn't mirror it with history, so it didn't update. I'm going to delete it so it doesn't confuse me later. Repipe. Non-uniform scale again. Flow along curve again. Fill it again. And take a look now at how it plays with the rest of my model. Do I like it better? Yeah, I think I do. I think I do like it better. Um, I would like it even better if it bit in more. So. this um, curve. I'd like 
both pieces, both ends of this to bite in a little more to my model. It's kind of an unpleasant curve there, so I'll allow that to come down a bit. And for this to come down a bit. So I just get kind of a smooth swoop. Take both of these up and in a little bit more. Good. Since I move those straight up and down, they won't change the curve relationship with this one. Flow along curve. Fillet edge. Yes, that is better. Okay, I can live with that. Now I need to lay out my pattern. Mirror that. First, first I'm going to group these. Mirror this over. Okay. That's a problem. Right there is a problem. Now I could save myself some trouble if I would have used history when I did that. I did not do that. But obviously I can't have that breaking through the surface over there. So I'll lower this side back down. Flow. Fill it. Mirror. Check. same thing twice as foolish, so I'm going to do the flow along curve again this time with history. And I'm going to mirror again this time with history. Bring my curves back, my pipes. Go wireframe. Pick my curve. Turn on its points. Grab these last um, three points. Shade my model. Move those down. problem is really not at the end. That's interesting. The problem is not at the end. The problem is across the seam between the red and the blue. on being visible there a little bit. But that's not enough to concern me, especially at the maquette level of modeling I'm on. So, go ahead and fill the edges. Group um, the 
center element. Mirror it from side to side. Group this element. Turn off gumball. Rotate them with copy, yes. From side to side. Group all of these elements. Copy my entire pattern down the line. Do a cutting plane. are going to be high compared to my rims because they're on top of the wire. So I need to lower them. I already did this once and I have the original on another layer, not hidden. It's right here. So I'll bring that back. as I predicted, are now 
floating away because I made my pattern thinner. Just so I have the copy to refer to, I'm going to copy them over. I'm going to delete one of these, mirror with history, around the center, so that I can now move these. I'm going to go wireframe so I can see. And I'm going to make a 1.4 millimeter sphere for visual reference. I need to make sure that these wires bite into this rim that much. M enter, grid snap off, point to move from, click anywhere, hold down the shift key. And when I see those have bitten into where I have that good point four, I'm done. That'll bring them both together at the same time, because I had history on my mirror. I can get rid of my little sphere now. So here are my two rings. The one that I built in our previous video, our tutorial. And the one I have just finished. And I do like the shape of these better. Okay. The overall box in the center is a little squat, but the shape of the overall motif is a nice square. Whereas this, even though the center was also a little, a little elongated, the whole thing was quite elongated. Now, I'm going to actually think and ask myself, do I like it enough to accept it, or am I going to go back and redo that whole thing? It's an important decision because the ring will be, every decision I make with the ring from here on out will be based on this proportion. Okay, I'm going to pause the video here anyway, and I'll let you know when we pick back up. Uh, thanks for watching.